Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee with Craig. We're talking politics, firearms, firearms policy, culture, movies, radio, you name it. We're talking about it right here on Coffee with Craig. So please take a moment to like and share this program, uh, whether you're watching us on Facebook, watching us on YouTube, or you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, uh, Apple iTunes, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, you name it. Uh, please may take a moment to share this program so that your friends can join in the conversation as it's taking place. Also to remind you, especially on Facebook, if you want to get the alerts when these things go live, you got to remember to hit the notification, the little bell thingy uh, right there on the page so that you can actually get the notifications when these programs go live. Also, please make it a point to go to fpcgear.com. That's fpcgear.com. Uh, we are on the regular putting up uh, new stuff, putting up uh, various different things like uh, T-shirts, uh, hoodies, uh, we've got uh, we've got uh, coffee mugs up there. We've got all sorts of pro Second Amendment gear that you can uh, look at, that you can purchase, uh, and just know that everything that is there, every penny that you spend there, actually goes right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms. So you can support the Second Amendment, and you can look good doing it. Please make sure to go to fpcgear.com. Uh, once again, being political season, we all know it's poll time. Always a bunch of stuff, a bunch of people talking about various different polls, this poll, that poll, telling you where candidates are and what candidates are, what the electorate is thinking. And needless to say, obviously when it comes time for polling, uh, well, they always want to talk about guns. They always want to find out and get a, an opinion or at least a, find out where the American people stand on various different issues relating to firearms. The specific poll that we're going to talk about today has to do with a poll that Gallup did at the beginning of October. Uh, and this had to do with the assault weapons ban and whether or not uh, Americans were still in support of the idea of banning assault weapons or basically what they call assault weapons. But what we're really talking about is semi-automatic center fire rifles, uh, some of the most commonly owned firearms in the entire country, whether or not they should be banned. Now, one of the things that was particularly noted in this particular poll was the significant change. If you look here, you'll notice that uh, uh, in 2017, this was uh, right, right after Las Vegas uh, and Parkland, and basically the shootings that took place about a year ago, uh, there was uh, a very, very close divide, meaning uh, it was like 49 uh, to 48. The, num the percentage of people who believed that there should be a, a, that there should be a ban on the on these firearms and those who believe that there weren't there shouldn't be but then sure enough you look at it a year later take a look at that 57 percent of those polled believe that there should not be a ban on on these firearms as well as 40 percent who believed that there should so in other words not only did support gain significantly but also uh, so, I mean, sorry, not support. Not only did opposition to such a ban increase dramatically, but support for such a ban also decreased dramatically. I mean, we're talking about a 17-point difference between those who support a ban and those and those who do not support a ban. And basically, taking it back to where it almost where it, it historically has been. Now. I know a lot of you out there are saying, well, you know, so, you know, what does that mean? And it comes down to really to this. During that time, a year ago, there was, you saw absolutely nothing in the news except why isn't Congress doing something? Why isn't Congress doing something? Why isn't somebody doing something? Why isn't somebody doing something? We need to be banning these. It was an onslaught in the media, in the entertainment industry, and the Everybody was talking about how these things needed to be banned. But you notice that over time, and this is generally what happens, when, when people are really, the, the people who support the idea of allowing people to own these, the, once again, these commonly owned firearms, the people who actually believe in the Second Amendment usually stand pretty resolute in terms of where they're going to be on this particular issue. Those who are gun grabbers, any opportunity that they have to to take away the rights of individuals, 
they're going to support. They're going to continue to support. And when these incidents happen, they just get louder. There's not more of them. They just get louder. And so the people who wind up being influenced a lot of times in these polls are the people who are in the middle, the people who really don't know. And when I say they don't know, I mean they, they're either not really sure of what you talk about when you say military-style assault weapon. They're really not sure what you mean by that. And they're also not sure about what are the laws currently. Because what winds up happening is this. As soon as you say military-style assault weapons, they think machine guns. Well, no, they're like, well, no, no, people shouldn't be able to own machine guns. Not realizing that in, in many states, you can't own a machine gun. And, and in many states, those where you can't, there is a federal, there's a process that you have to go through federally. I mean, we're talking the hoops you have to jump through in order to be able to get one is astronomical. Or at least let me clarify, get one legally. Let's clarify. But they don't, they don't know and they don't realize that. When they start talking about things like the gun show loophole, they don't realize in many states, when you're talking to people, for, for, for example, in California, people in California say, yeah, we need to eliminate the gun show loophole. Guess what? There is no gun show loophole in the state of California. Every single firearm goes through a background check. When you tell the average person in California that who was in favor of greater gun control, they're like, oh, I didn't know that. In fact, they don't realize that most of the things that they clamor for are already law in, in many of the states where they are. And, in, and they're not the law in places where they aren't. Huh. They also don't really understand a lot of the technology. When you start talking about things like semi-automatic, they think, well, I won't even get into what they think semi-automatic means, but they think it's just another version of automatic. They do. When, that's why you get people coming up with terms like fully semi-automatic. Like that makes it somewhat automatic? No, it's still one trigger pull, one round. That's semi-automatic. But they don't know that. They, and when they don't know that, they also don't understand that when you start talking about banning semi-automatic firearms, they're talking about just about every single handgun with the exception of what, revolvers. But what happens is these people in the middle, many of them either don't know, and some of them actually do take the time to educate themselves or to at least listen to the information as it comes forward. And as they are educated, as they hear some of this stuff, then they start to back off of some of this stuff because they realize they're like, yes, well, I really would like to do something. And sometimes their initial support for, for just the idea or the concept is simply because they really don't want to see these things happen anymore. And I think all of us are there. None of us really want to see these things happening anymore. But that doesn't mean that we then turn around and take away rights. Um, but And, and, and to, to, to kind of support that, I mean, to kind, of, to kind of back that up, one only need look at the divide in terms of whether or not someone actually actually owns a firearm. If you take a look at this little graphic here, it'll show you that there is a significant divide f between those who between uh, those who support the idea of a ban and those who don't based on whether or not they actually have a firearm in the home. Meaning if you, if you have a firearm in the home, there's probably a greater chance that you may, and I say may because there's a lot of gun owners who don't know what they're talking about still. They may own a gun, but they're not, uh, how shall we say, supporters or advocates of the Second Amendment because they still believe that there ought to be quote-unquote reasonable restrictions and and we all know that once you start getting into the restrictions they're not reasonable at all because the devil's in the details but in terms of that permanent divide in terms of those folks who are never ever 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 going to move a lot of that is based on party affiliation as well one only need look at the difference between republicans and democrats and independents when it comes to when it comes to the to the same issue, if you look here, fifty six percent of Republic, fifty six percent of Democrats support the idea of banning semi automatic quote unquote assault weapons. Twenty only twenty five percent of Republicans, and then if you look at it, thirty eight percent thirty eight percent of Independents. 
once again, independents generally tend to side a little bit more with with uh, uh, us or with Republicans or with you know those who believe in the Second Amendment. Uh, a lot of independents I know are well, they're just frustrated with the Republican Party, so therefore, you know, <laughs> they decided they don't want to be Republicans anymore. The thing that I'm trying to, to help you all to see here is is that it's vitally important that when that when these things happen, when there are these incidents and the media is clamoring and friends and whatnot are clamoring and talking on Facebook about this, about that, and about the other, and we need to ban this and we need to ban that, it's important for us to have a reasoned, measured response. It's important for us to be able to communicate why this is a bad idea because when given, when given the opportunity, when we do that, we actually move the needle. And that's what in the end winds up happening. The information comes out. The details come out. Now, they blame it all on, well, the gun lobby and, you know, the gun manufacturers who, by the way, give a fraction, a fraction of the money that comes from Bloomberg and Soros and all of those left-wing uh, anti-Second Amendment billionaires. Any money that comes from the firearms industry or the firearms uh, organizations is dwarfed by the money that is actually spent by the anti-gun community. But I want you to understand that that it's that push, that emotional push in rhetoric. And that's why it's important for us to push back. Now, it's important for us to understand and respect the fact that, hey, you know, yes, a tragedy did just occur. Let's not let's try not to be bombastic, even though we know that that's how they're going to be. It's time for us to continue to push the facts. And I, you know, it's funny. I see the conversations. I see you guys out there. I see you guys having those conversations on social media. And you guys are doing a fantastic job of sharing the facts. As long as we keep doing that, then our Second Amendment right, our right to keep and bear arms, our right to be able to own these firearms, which are, which are safe and in common use, uh, will continue to be protected. And anyway, folks, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. We very much appreciate you guys tuning in and joining us and telling your friends about the Farms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.